I'm not sure if I want to do that because if it's someone with dialogue, I want to see if they have more dialogue later. Shrouded by night, but with steady stride. Colored by blood, but always clear of mind. Round under the church. Beasts are a curse, and curse is a shackle. Only ye the true blades of the church. I'll get dialogue with you. Eye, but with steady stride. Colored by blood, but always clear of mind. Round under the church. Beasts are a curse, and curse is a shackle. Only the true blade to the church. So this is basically Latria. Hello, Shakiz. Uh, we can always hit him later. He's right by the. <laughs> He's right by the lamp, so. Don't need to hit him right away. Frenzy Cold Blood. Yeah, it, it immediately, even though I've never played Demon Souls, immediately walking in, I was like, this is Latria, basically. Whoa, where the fuck did you come from? I, I don't know the answer to that question, Azuren, any more than you do. Latria mixed with some elements of Anor Londo and Duke Ar Duke's Archives, basically. That's very cool. Shrouded by nine, but with steady stride. Colored by blood, but always clear of mind. Ground under the church. Beasts are a curse, and can only... Shrouded by night, but with steady stride. Colored by blood, but always clear of mind. Ground under the church. Only. That reminds me very much of several of the NPCs and cells in Latria as well. It's it's like nothing I've ever even seen before. Yeah, likewise as we're end. I'm just waiting for them for to put it out on PS PS now. Interesting. Something to keep my eye out for then, I guess. Because it could just be similar, similar mechanically to the people behind doors. But with the exception of the woman in the Forbidden Woods, this is eerily reminiscent of the Witch's Abode, where we find the Carol Rune. The Carol Rune workshop tool. <sighs> That's the beast armor. And he is carrying a bell. Talk. Are you a hunter? Well, wow. that's very odd. Do you hear the toll of the bell? <laughs> if I'm being honest, I would have to say I hear nothing because they have the volume so low on my TV. <laughs> Why would you let him out? It's like Navlan all over again. Well, it's uh, blind playthroughs. I really should have... In fact, I really should have done the DLC with my Regret build. Although, but Regret is like almost level 300, so that would have been... Although, I think he has a new game plus. Whatever. Uh, so if I'm being honest, I would say I hear nothing, but I, of course, want to see what this actually does. Liar. He knew it. Such pettiness will be your undoing. The beast you seek will not be found here. Go back to your hunt. And if you have the chance, put this knife behind you. Places better left untouched. Secrets. Better left alone. Only a fool would 
so brazenly wrong. He saw right through my charade. See, this is what was missing from me from the first two Dark Souls 2 DLCs. Without uh, an NPC with whom you can talk, and in this one we've spoken to so many different NPCs, NPCs and things that I don't even understand. And yeah, in Dark Souls 2, the only DLC NPC we were to speak with was, um, what's his face? Or uh, Elsana, the Silent Oracle, which was really disappointing to me. Bear in mind, some places are better left untouched, and some secrets are better left alone. Only fools to brazenly roam. So that right there, Richard, that is a very Lovecraftian theme, yes? Uh, I seem to recall Redgrave saying some... Uh, yeah, well, when, when I had him on for Let's Talk Lore... Uh, he was saying how, you know, it's not like the, it's not like the Socrates figure who goes out and, you know, learns all this language, uh, knowledge and, and wants to spread it to others. It's someone who goes back and says, you know, I've seen some shit, you don't want to, you don't want to go there. Some things are just left on, oh. <laughs> this is what he says. Some places are better left untouched, and some secrets are better left alone. Only fools to brazenly roam. <laughs> yeah, but Nadalia has like two lines of dialogue, and that's it. Forever you shall rot, and you are not deserving of the mire, and that's all. So that's not really like a character fleshing out a world in the same way that this is. We have several characters fleshing out the nightmare. It's the idea that you have a rational, intelligent academic trying to engage with the world empirically. Uh, you can't open the door of the Memetim. Person's right there. Uh, I'm. In hindsight, I should have uh, been more honest. Let's see. Switch action. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, locked. So the rationality and science they had at their faith that they had their faith in fails them. When they, they come across something like they that you can't comprehend, right? That not even interesting. Very interesting. That's kind of what happened to me when I started grad school. I was a hardcore atheist reductionist. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, not. <laughs> Very much not. Fist of Great... Gratia. Gratia. Fist of Gratia. Hunter's tool? the heck was that? <laughs> Beastly ignorance. Left hand weapon, thank you. A chunk of iron fitted with finger holes. The hulking hunter woman, simple gratia, ever hopeless, when handling hunter firearms, preferred to knock the lights out of beasts with this hunk of iron, which incidentally caused heavy stagger. Gratia was a fearsome hun hunter, and to onlookers, her unrelenting pummeling appeared oddly heroic. No wonder this weapon later assumed her name. That's cool, I like that. I like the... the fact that, you know, in spite of the setting and, and stuff like that, that women in FromSoft games can still be there's possibility for them. Yeah, it's a different model than we've seen anywhere else, right? Oh, 
Oh, that's her. Oh, that's so sad. Oh. Crazy, I'm sorry. Let's see if it, I, I, I assume that there's some way you could, although I'd probably get stuck if I did actually jump over. Oh, that's so sad. I don't think you can, though. No. So let's see what that's all about. Low requirements, so it's kind of like assess this, but nope. Yeah, at least you didn't turn into a beast. Although, this is if this is in fact the Dreamlands, you know, her body could be somewhere else entirely, right? As I as I conceive of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, it made me think immediately of uh, the Lost Sinner. Although hers was just to, to bind her hands, her wrists. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Real nice from soft. <laughs> Hello, BFH. Are you uh, on your lunch break? Whoa, weird looking rats. Very weird looking rats. Something going on with your eyes. I assume some sort of experimentation by the healing church given where we are. is something that's very topical for me because currently in the context of my comprehensive exams of reading this book, Making Mice, <laughs> all about why certain animals attain laboratory creature status, waiting for the damsel in distress as always, <laughs> breaking company rules. Bloodstone chunk, very nice. So uh, that's very clever, the way that. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad to have you here for as long as you're you're here again, DFH. I've been invigorated by just how exciting all of this content is. Notwithstanding the, the very muted sound of my voice right now. Um, and yeah, uh, one of the things about mice and rats is that, you know, they're widely viewed as vermin. So you could do things to their bodies that wouldn't be wouldn't be deemed especially problematic when compared to other animals. And perhaps the most striking example of this is uh, there was a paper that I read by uh, a professor of mine who's actually also on my comprehensive committee on, uh, it's called The Queer Life of Lab Rats, and it's about, uh, I'm invigorated by all the disgusting jokes I make, and you are quite good at those. Oh, these people are receiving blood administration. These beds. It's like a clinic, it's like an Yosefka's clinic, but for royalty. Now imagining someone stepping on mice and rats crushing them, thanks for that. <laughs> Sorry the moment, Tim. Um, but just to, to wrap up this thread really quick, uh, in in their attempt to, as as Dr. Pettit puts it, to materialize the the sexuality of rats, um, or the heterosexuality of rats specifically, this uh, scientist and and to ensure that the the experiments reflected the assumption that of female passivity in sexuality and male male activity. And, oh yeah, touche the Mevitin, touche. That makes sense. And so he, like, you know, when the women, the, the, the female rats would, you know, resist the advances of the male ones, uh, we talked to something resembling Ludwig, or the, the head on the ground, yes we did. And so basically, he removed the, the corners. He actively rearranged the cage. He called it the copulation cage. I think this was Frank Beach was his name. And he, in such a way that the female rat couldn't escape anywhere. Uh, so he had to actively set the cage up so that it would 
show kind of heterosexuality as a natural state and not anything else. When in fact the male rats would just bang other male rats. They didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Back to the game. The game proper, I should say. This looks to be a hunter. A female hunter. Wearing... What looks to be the holy shawl. Okay, Zykes. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. It, it was a pleasure as always. Great one's wisdom. What would they need this implement for? He's saying it's like Frank's fuck van in It's Always Sunny. <laughs> His spy van? Azura, and you watch It's Always Sunny? Oh, the, the rape fan, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stumbled across, like, the one band word in my, uh, in my chat. But Frank calls it a spy van. Oh, I'm afraid to move forward. You you should have been here earlier than when uh oh my fear was uh New Arcane spell. Hello. You are perhaps a member of Ludwig's Holy Blades. Wild card, baby! Because, yeah, uh, the trash man and I can, can virtually, can virtually have entire conversations where we don't actually say anything other than just exchanging quotes from It's Always Sunny Philadelphia. Okay, I have a plan for this engagement, and I'm quite surprised at how vigilant they are about pursuing me here. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never noticed the connection between there being a holy blade after the fight with Lovebig, yeah. So it seemed to be one of one of his uh, crew or his followers, maybe. Come on. Okay, let's let's go back up here. Your friend is up here. We can all be a big happy family together. No, no, no! Damn it! I'm so goddamn stubborn. Once I've got an idea in my head about how I want to deal with a particular encounter. I'm just going to end up killing her with all this bullet spam. Or she's going to end up killing me! <laughs> Come on! Alright, she's not cooperating. Oh, dead. Can't wait till season 11 comes out in, in January. Likewise, I'm... I'm Moonlight Blade, or whatever it's called in this. <laughs> yeah. So that's why everyone was like, get it! <laughs> Holy Moonlight Sword. I appreciate uh, everyone else for not... Uh, an Arcane Blue Sword? For, for not uh, bugging me. Going, oh, you kill it. I killed the head and there weren't any negative outcomes that I noticed, so <laughs> I already did. An arcane sword discovered long ago by Ludwig. When blue moonlight dances around the sword, and it chan channels the abyssal cosmos, its great blade will hurl a shadowy light wave. 
The Holy Moonlight Sword is synonymous with Ludwig, the Holy Blade, but few have ever set eyes on the Great Blade, and whatever guidance it has to offer, it seems to be of a very private, elusive sort. Well, it's a damn good thing I upped my arcane then, in this case. Uh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah, see, that's that's why I that's why I tried to level everything equally. I assume that this is doing a number on my durability. That is so fucking cool. That transform attack. Alright, um... Oh. We don't have any Twin Bloodstone Shards. Um... Forbidden Woods, I think we've already gotten all the ones that we had in Forbidden Woods. Yeah, but then... Oh, it's so fucking cool. Alright, whatever, we'll just use it later. We'll use it later. Isn't that yeah? Maybe that's maybe that's it. It's just the nostalgia of it, but the sound and everything. Oh, it's just beautiful. Next gen moonlight greatsword. Shush, you, Mister. See, it says locked. Uh, Richard, what what leads me to believe? Uh, I'm not that far yet. I haven't uh, defeated Rom yet. Otherwise, I would. But um. The, what leads me to believe that we should be able to open that door is the fact that it says lock and not closed. Um, because the, the door on the Great Bridge from the Cathedral Ward side, and I think on the other side as well, it says closed and not locked. I miss speaking to him also. When I wake up, need the moonlight love. <laughs> Alright, let's try and do this a little bit more successfully this time. Oh, you did open it, okay. I thought you said you couldn't find a way to open it. Oh, okay, okay. Now we're cooking gas. No, come on. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's only going to be enough time for them to get a few hits on each other. And then they get all confused afterwards, like... <laughs> yeah, likewise, Richard. Because now I have to go back and get more. Which is ridiculous. a.m. I think 4 a.m. will be my cutoff. If I can make it there, but I'm doing better than I was an hour ago. An hour ago, I thought I was going to fall asleep on stream. Oh, we passed 200 fall. Eye coverings. Uh. 
Uh, in fact, failed stream one day. Stream Dark Souls. <laughs> Yeah, I'll make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, this is very interesting. Go up, excuse me for one second though. Oh no, they'll go to bed of Zuran. I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna edit it. Ed, edit together uh, the whole playthrough into like 45 minute chunks, and it'll be higher quality. Oh, that's right. Okay, thanks. I have the rest of the week off after today. I'll see you when you stream once more. Okay, thanks very much for joining us, Zuran. Does anyone know if firing beams off the sword lowers, lowers do? I would assume so, too baked, yeah. Uh, that's how it's worked in, in uh, every previous game that I know of, where it appears, so. Um. A tragic figure, but he will shame himself no longer. He died with his ideals untarnished. He was a true hero, and earned that much at least. Do you know why the hunters are drawn to this nightmare? Because it sprouted from their very misdeeds. Things that some would rather keep secret. A pitiful tale of petty arrogance, really. High time someone exposed the whole charade. Now, now, go on ahead. You seek nightmares and the secrets within, do you not? Now, now, you... Okay, you need to stop doing that with the sound. Uh, bad habit from back when Moonlight Butterfly's channel did not exist. And I had to capture all the dialogue for myself. So I would always make sure that, yeah, I was standing straight forward so that it was equally split between the left channel and the right channel. And that I turned off all the sound effects so that... Yeah, wow. But it's nice to know that, yeah, we got some pretty awesome community of people who have each other's packs on that. And in this case, because uh, I wasn't recording it directly, uh, the sound quality for these streams through the uh, PlayStation 4 is not especially great, so... So if we're going to capture it, it might as well be captured, it needs to be captured directly. But I would have to switch up HDMI ports and yeah. A whole mess that I'm not prepared to deal with at this moment in time. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't get any more sham phone plays. Alright, no more farting around. We'll just take him out. Hi, friends. It's a cute little arcane spell you got there. Play the Mortal Kombat theme. No, 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 go fight your friend, go fight your friend, why are you fighting me? Ah. Alright. Okay, known uh, Kilots, thanks very much for joining us. Much appreciated. And uh, there will be more, uh, definitely more streams to come of this DLC. So I hope to see you in a future one. Have a good night. I assume that they're unique respawns, or, or single spawn enemies, which suggests that they're unique people. Mm. That arcane damage, holy moly. 
They both sounded like they had the middle-aged female voice. Hard to tell. Quicksilver bullets. And... Aww. They're single spawn, yeah. So they're unique individuals. What the shit is this? That's certainly unique. Okay, so we have the thumbnail <laughs> for at least the first episode, or one of the episodes. Because that is pretty sweet. Apologies everyone, one second, I just, <laughs> I just have to capture this thumbnail. Although it's windowed, which kind of sucks, but that is beautiful. Like, there's so many spots in this game where I'm just struck by what I see. And I assume that part of that is just the next genness of it, but also just how the world fits together. And, yeah. Because that just right now is like, wow, that is beautiful. But also incredibly scary and unsettling at the same time. In the way that Bloodborne does so well. Or in the fashion that Bloodborne does so well. Okay, so this is an elevator. Insert eye pendant. So I assume we're going to insert the eye pendant and then go down the elevator. Uh, I should probably have the HUD on. And look at how there's a little beast under here. And this is a slab similar to the ones that they have at uh, Yosefka's clinic, really. And so just like in the opening cinematic, there's a little beast hiding under there. Suggesting, yeah, the origin of the Scourge of the Beast in Blood Ministration. But are these guys even... these guys aren't doing Blood Ministration, though. This one's got a bell and no face. Does this one have a face? No. Nope. So those are just like servants. It's this guy we're supposed to look at. Um, and I have no idea what to make of them. Uh, they are wearing, note that they are wearing what appear to be, the one in the middle has a blindfold cap. So he's either wearing these, or these, or no, sorry, uh, well, or these, the surgical long gloves. They look like the surgical long gloves. All right. That is so weird. I think they're supposed to represent the upper echelon of the church flanked by the white and black doctors. Look at this. <sighs> Here's the Duke's archives part. What? This is like... This is unbelievable. Especially when you have I have to do so many for Let's Talk Lore series. Oh, see ya. Turn back and remember, hidden path. Don't give up. Very kind. Nothing but malformed things here, I'm sure. I don't doubt you, kind sir. Or madam. Insight gain. Wow. <sighs> 
this is overwhelming in its awesomenitude. Nice! We needed that. Very badly. And so that's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think I finished this thought earlier when I was saying it's very clever how they set up the drops in the area because you're only getting twin blood some shards in the early part and now you are we're actually getting some chunks out of the deal as well okay I'm just extra fidgety right now so I didn't mean to show you my closet there okay now what are these things Has someone, anyone, seen my eyes? I am afraid I've dropped them in a puddle. Everything is pale now. I'm very excited to see what type of video Neo Loki is probably thinking about making at this moment if he's played the DLC yet. Because I have a feeling Neo Loki's gonna make some pretty awesome videos out of this. I love the way he edits everything together and some of the shots he gets. I don't know how he gets some of the shots he gets. Hi, friend. I can give you some eyes. Someone. Oh, I'm getting poisoned. Everything is pale now. Okay. Did these people just die from the poison? No, they were fighting something. Oh, hi, friend. Nice. Very nice. So what are we up to now? Eight. So if we get the Moonlight Sword up to plus six, then we can actually get it up to... Yeah, plus eight. Cool. Locked. What the heck are these? They're like... I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it. Like half lizard, half insect? I don't know. Well, if this is indeed the Duke's archives, I suppose lizard men are not out of the question. No, no, they look like the celestial children. They have those statues. Oh, yep. Yeah. And and those look like the the like circular objects that you find all over the baby celestials. So pretty crazy. Oh, okay, I I just assumed that you were busy, Richard. It's all good. I'm glad you got it now though. I already complete this place now, but I have to say there's a lot of nasty stuff in here. Yeah. What I find funny is someone commented Fast Drink start a new life with that Moonlight Great Sword. Alright, too big, it's too big. Thanks so much for uh, joining us. It was really nice having you here. Hope you have a good night, and I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, I I'm looking forward to making it. I hope you have a great night, and yeah, good luck with your new life with the Moonlight Sword. God, I never looked at these statues in the orphanage before. I can't wait to get my uh, future press guide, because then we will have enemy names, and apparently some more explicit lore. Very clever from Soft. Some very explicit lore. 
when compared to the first, uh, the guide for the main game. Or at least Epic Name Bro said that in his video about it. So this is... Very much not a very sterile looking place. Hmm. Classic from Sob. So you have the one lady waiting for you to enter, ambushing you from the side. You have all these other ladies seemingly docile. And just waiting for you, and they're just luring you into a trap. And then these ones over here... Okay, maybe the weapon switch was a bad idea. Oh, did you see that hunter ghost right there? You can actually see that they were ringing a bell. Hey, Strife Cross. I am still going indeed. Um, it's just too fucking interesting. I'm half asleep, but it's just too damn interesting. Type of failed kit, maybe. They seem more to me like uh, they're like lab workers or medical staff or nurses, simply put. Because there's so many of them. We're all wearing the same thing. I guess they could be patients. It's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Bile. I just love clock towers and large areas that go upward. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah, it certainly has a sense of verticality that is not really present in the rest of the game. All right, let's. They're pretty weak to fire, actually. So, I think it's, it might just be elemental damage in general. But again, we'll be we'll know for sure when we get the guide. So I'm looking forward to that. Whoa. They don't make any of the same noises though. They, they sound human. Human but not. They remind me of the Ulusilians in the Artorias and the Abyss DLC. They have virtually the same attacks too. And they have long arms which suggests priesthood perhaps. It's not the typical Yarnamite look with one arm longer than the other but... There are so many of them too. So they might be patients. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, this is a house of fucking horrors. Look at this, like... Jesus. They have different attack pa interesting. A private hospital. It's a ladder.
This is pretty nuts. Pretty, pretty. This one has a weapon. So that's probably not good. Oh my god, it's one of the... Th it's one of the things they hang the... Blood from. Getting back into this corner was not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. That was a really bad idea. 